Today we're going to look at another computer from my past, but this one's a little bit further back in time and a lot smaller in scale. Hi, welcome to the Mammoth Tech Show. I'm Jeff and this is my Sharp Pocket Computer PC1246 that I picked up back when I was very young. It's actually one of my first computers and probably the oldest computer I still own. But what is this? It kind of just looks like an overgrown pocket calculator. Let's find out. So this is the Sharp Pocket Computer PC1246 and it has a whole 2k of memory and a 4-bit, yep that's 4-bit not 8, CMOS processor powering it and a lovely one line 16 character LCD display. The pocket computers this silver rectangle here in the corner and if we just slide it to the side like that and down it comes out and this is the CE 125 and it's the expansion unit which gives it a printer which sort of looks like a till roll because uh, basically it is a till roll thermal printer and here we have a lovely little dictaphone style cassette deck which you can use to save and load data I believe it came out in 1984, although one source does date it as 1982. In most regions it's branded as Sharp, but in the US it was also known as the Tandy or Radio Shack PC-8. This particular example was bought by myself back when I was a kid. Knowing me, it was probably on sale at the time. I think I might have got it from WH Smiths which back then sold computers and computer games and things like that. But I can't be 100% sure. I remember being very happy with this little computer back in the day. The minuscule little cassette deck was a particular favorite part of mine. I was really into basic programming back then, which is fortunate because that's all you could really do with this. I used to program simple text adventures and basic group machine simulators, things like that. There are two CR2032 button batteries in here, and that lets it store one program at a time. So unless you had one of these cassette drives to load new programs, the only way to switch applications, as it were, was to literally write a new one. Given the tiny little screen and limited capabilities, it was, in retrospect, a very limited machine. You could have possibly used it for creating estimates or quotations if you're out meeting clients, but I do remember that even with my limited coding expertise at the time, I had to dial back my game designs to live within the limited capacity of this little machine. When I initially retrieved this little fellow from the dusty corner where it's been hiding for the past three decades or so, I was concerned because even though I replaced the 2032 batteries, when powering it on, I just got a little busy indicator which wouldn't clear. So I decided to take the back of this little guy to see what I could find. And it's held in place by a ludicrous amount of screws. I mean, seriously, was there an international tiny screw mountain that you were trying to work their way through when constructing this thing? It looks like someone loaded screws into a blunderbuss, fired it into the back of this poor thing, and just screwed them home where they landed. Finally getting the back off revealed a couple of chips 
and a nasty amount of battery corrosion on the terminals. I thought the corroded terminals might have prevented good contact with the batteries. So I thought I'd attempt a bit of a clean on them, squirted some contact cleaner and attacked it with a cloth and then put it all back together again. Fortunately, this seemed to do the trick and it fired into life. However, one of the lines on the LCD display seems to have died. More seriously, the cassette deck appears to be non-functional too. You can enter the command to load in a program and it seems to respond, but nothing happens. The cassette deck doesn't move. If you listen carefully, you can hear it make tiny little squeaking noises. So probably the little metal belts within it have perished in the intervening years or turned into that horrible gunky stuff. So unfortunately, we won't be able to demonstrate the suite of demonstration programs that came on the little cassette that was bundled with the machine. I loved this little machine back in the day and I got many, many hours of programming pleasure out of it. But even back then, I could see its limitations. When you consider how difficult it was to perform something even quite limited on a machine like this and compare it to how ridiculously easy it is to perform tasks that are vastly more sophisticated on even a basic smartphone today, you realize just how far the technology has advanced. I believe the Science Museum has one of these models in its collection, but did you ever have one of these pocket PCs back then? What did you do with it? What did you manage to get out of it? Put your stories on these little proto pocket PCs in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, why not give it a like? It really does help the channel. And if you'd like to see more from us, why not subscribe? I've been Jeff. This has been my teeny tiny childhood computer. This has been the Mammoth Tech Show and you've been very kind to watch. Thank you very much. Oh.